Hello and welcome to yet another exciting edition of Trends Travel. I'm your host for today, Eloise Goble, and as you can see, I'm indulging into the finer things in life right now as I sit in a McLaren. While I do that, why don't you indulge in the show as we take you to Kwapa Besi. We are still at Kwapa Besi Tented Safari Camp, and we start our day with yet another early morning game drive. The drive is cold and there are no animals in sight. It seems the animals had the same idea we wanted to have. They are all lying in, avoiding the cold. We drive for a while, seeing nothing, until we see the McDonald's of the bush. We are bound to see these at least, as they are so plentiful. From then on, it was a lone wildebeest, standing alone in an open field. Then we are back to our beautiful, serene, quiet drive, chatting to our guide as we traipse along. With no further hope of any sightings, we are off to breakfast. There is nothing business as usual about breakfast at Kwafu Besi. One would think that out here, where there are no electrical outlets, breakfast would be cereal and cold milk, but it's not. We start out with the holy grail of the early morning, the hug in a mug, coffee. But that is not all. Standing on an open fire are the most beautiful poiki pots emitting the best odor my hungry tummy had ever smelt. Breakfast consists of tomato, sausage, and bacon. And of course, you can even have fried eggs. Chef is definitely on point. Nothing is off limits out here. They don't let a small thing like electricity hinder a marvelous breakfast. I am even escorted to my dining table by the camp manager and seated at the best table in the house. The food is delicious and my view is even better. A family of hippos out in the dam peek out of the water, giving me a glimpse between every mouthful. Truly spectacular. While others are standing in line at the breakfast buffet, we are out in the wild having an outdoor breakfast overlooking the Mbubu Dam. Talk about glamour camping. So we're basically at Mbubu Dam, which is southwest of Kwafubezi, about five minutes from camp. Normally we do the setup for extraordinary people like yourselves. Uh, we normally set up a fire with like five pots, do a continental breakfast setup, followed with one breakfast that's going to be in the pots. And as you can see on your far right, we have lovely guests that are enjoying the scenic view of the dam. Yes, so this is pretty much something that we do for our guests that are on honeymoon or are just out for a weekend away. So you said that you set up a fire, so everything is cooked by the fire? Yes, everything is prepared on the fire. You get to choose what you need. So pretty much buffet in the bush. In the bush. Yes. And um, so what can we expect to see while we're sitting there having a look out there? Okay, pretty much everything. Like you are probably going to see hippos that are currently in sight. Uh, water buck can also be seen, crocodiles. Pretty much everything that you might see near lake or dam. So do you only do the setup for breakfast or can you do it like for an evening? We can do... Breakfast, lunch or dinner, depends on the occasion. So tell me, there's a lot of food smells going around, so why, no animals joining us for breakfast? Nothing? No, unfortunately not. We had Franklin's this morning, that's pretty much about that. Other than that, they're very, very chilled. Very it's okay. Chilled. Yeah, very chilled animals. Okay, great. And then tell me, who helps with the breakfast? Who's making the breakfast? Because I see I have two helpers here. Okay, so pretty much what happens is I have a ranger, I have a camp assistant, a chef and myself to delegate and see that everything goes accordingly. Chef will be in charge of the cooking. Mpo, the camp assistant, is then ready for setting up. That's her duties and making sure that everything is in good, great order. I just need to be here to delegate and see that everything is up to standard. Great, thank you so much. The pleasure's all mine. Then it was back on the road to our next adventure for the day. This time, it's horseback riding. Before I saddle up though, we have a chat with Mara, just so that I know what I'm in for. Currently on Mabula Private Game Reserve, uh, situated just on the foot and end of the Waterberg, um, in Lampapa area. And what happens at this exam? 
At this exact spot, we take out clients on a horseback safari uh, for a walk throughout the bush on a big five game reserve. Uh, we can observe the animals in a more natural setting than supposed to on a game, a game drive vehicle. What about someone like me who's never ridden before? Um, how do we go about that? Basically, very relaxed um, environment. Uh, if you've never been on a horse, this is actually the, um, the trail for you. It's only a walking uh, trail, so we do not uh, encourage uh, trotting or galloping. Not because we don't think that you can ride, but we do not want to also upset the animals in the bush. So if um, you've never ridden before, the horses are trained just for a nice uh, slow walk. And um, uh, also, he will give you a, a briefing beforehand and will uh, put on the safety helmet uh, or safety gear for you and then make sure that you are comfortable, um, give you some uh, guidelines as to, what to how to steer the horse, what to do in a case of a scenario and then we take you out into the field. At least I'm assisted in the saddle up and I'm assigned to a grey beauty named Cody. Once on this gigantic animal, I'm strapped up and given a safety briefing. His neck is completely relaxed and that he's comfortable. All right. Okay. So now he's just uh, asking for a little bit more so that he can fall asleep while we're standing here <laughs> at this point. As you can see, they are extremely lazy before going out on the trail. All right. So the range you will just keep together for yourself here. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you feel, um, you can actually hold on to the pummel of the saddle right here. All right, um, the horses do work on voice command. So your guide in front, if he tells them to come closer, they will come closer and they will form a single file, which I will explain to everybody uh, quickly, briefly. Urinate at any point in time. I need you to stand up out of your saddle. Can you quickly stand up to me? Just stand up and lean forward. The reason for that is you're taking your weight off the horse's kidneys and um, you're taking that pressure off um, so that when the horses urinate, it's a little bit easier for them and then it's not a problem for them later in life with um, kidney problems. All right. Okay, Katie. <laughs> All right. Also that I need to know, anybody with asthma, epilepsy, um, high or low blood uh, pressure, sugar problems, are you okay, sir? Then we are off, venturing out of the safe confines of the stable and into the wild. My horse Cody is a lazy one, but a smart one. I'm not complaining because I appreciate his placidity and I'm not keen on being bucked off. One of the great benefits derived from doing a safari on horseback is the height and mobility offered from being mounted that sets this opportunity aside from any other activity. As we plod along, Cody and I seem to always lag behind and I find that instead of following the entire trail of those in front of us, he seems to find the shortest route between where we are and where they are. It's then that I started calling him Shortcut Cody. Shortcut Cody and I trot along merrily, getting acquainted with each other, taking in the sights and sounds. Our first wildlife encounter is a rhino. A white rhino to be exact, and she's not alone. Riders get information and take caution in approaching. It's quite a different feeling being this close without the confines of a safari vehicle to keep you safe. It feels so much more daring and certainly lives up to its intent to provide that sense of adventure. We take our time viewing the rhinos, then it's off again. I feel like John Wayne in any one of those westerns. Although we are not galloping, my heart certain is, as we venture further into the unknown. We approach a watering hole, and although I would have thought this the perfect place for Shortcut Cody to stop for a drink, we mosey on by. It seems we are cautioned not to stop, due to a crocodile lying silently at the water's edge. A thirsty passerby would have made for a hearty meal. With not much more to see, and having been on horseback for almost an hour, we make our way back to the stables. Eco Adventure Trails also offers a quad bike safari, which these pictures will show I did take advantage of. We then washed up and we are ready for our afternoon safari, this time in 2000 hectares of Pride Land. This is lion territory, and once in their enclosure, it isn't long until we find a family enjoying a lazy late afternoon nap. What the males are doing is, now they're not in that 
groups anymore. They're getting pushed out by the other males. Mm -hmm. So the younger ones go, and now they're looking for other older males to fight. If they can win that pride, they win that male, they win all the females. Right, and they kill all the babies as well, under like a year old, because they don't raise other cubs on their own. But now what happens is, sometimes the younger males go and they fight these males, but they're not succeeding, and then they form bachelor herds, and that's where these lions are escaping the parks and stuff like that, where they form bachelor herds, because the males are much better at doing what they do as a female, they're faster, they're stronger, all that. But why do they need to if they have females to do it for them? So they make it nice and easy. And they're the laziest cats we have. Um, they're only active four hours a day. That's about it's four to six hours a day. The rest of the time, eating, mating, sleeping. That's the basic of what they do. Um, and they're the ones that defend the territories, so that other males can't take over the females. And I just got onto the, the females about 190 kilos. The other one just likes the females when he wants to mate or he's hungry. Basic male. <laughs> and how old is the cub now? He's almost, you can say he's a year old now. Um, he's also a male, so which is going to cause a problem. Uh, but we'll eventually have to move him out. But now the male doesn't know the cub is a male. Interesting. That's a huge pause. They can literally break a zebra's neck with one slap of that paw. The amount of power they have, it's crazy. It's been a full day, and we ended watching the sun go down on the Majuma deck. This, FYI, is only a raised platform in the land of the lion, and potential danger aside, it's the most beautiful place to enjoy sundowners, share camp stories, and just enjoy nature. Well, I hope you had a great time at Kwafu Basin. And as you can see, I'm still in the McLaren. I just cannot get out of it. But what you can do is you can post those pics of things that you like on Instagram or on Twitter using the hashtag Trends Travel on Trends on SABC. The people who bend the spoon are they, our parents. They want us to be, to have a bright future, but they are doing this. Refrain from bending schools, refrain from bending property. I am not missing my words. Those that shall be found, definitely they must face the full might of the law. We have now signed. We are part of a growing number of African countries that support a free trade area for our continent. This is going to open up great opportunities for our economy because now the whole of Africa is open for doing business. So we are delighted. Those among us that are charged with the responsibility of dealing with corruption may please rise and do their job. There is so much corruption in South Africa, especially at the governance level. So much. This month, the Malrose Gallery is definitely where you need to be with the Mandela 100 exhibition. And speaking of exhibitions, you should look at the Basha Ahuru exhibition, which is coming up next. The greatest artist Michel Angelo once said the true work of art is but a shadow of divine perfection. And judging by this art portraits turning the walls of the Constitution Hill in Johannesburg, one can just say the art pieces on show are truly divine and very expressive. Established in 2013, the Freedom Festival celebrates various forms of art. Now in its sixth installment, the festival did not disappoint. Hundreds of art lovers grace this venue to explore what was on offer. Those who showcased their works were nominated for their creations. We caught up with one of the panelists to tell us more. It was such a hard choice. We had over 400 entries and there's so many talented youth in South Africa, guys. Like, it was seriously a whole day of trying to decide who our top 10 would be. And we still couldn't have the heart to, we picked 10. And then we put a whole bunch in a special pile because we just couldn't 
we couldn't get away from it. There's so much talent in South Africa. There's so many young people trying to tell their stories and wanting to be heard. The festival also celebrates urban culture, allowing young artists to enjoy their artistic freedom. We caught up with one of the festival organizers. This event particularly is uh, a program called the Nano's Creative Exchange. And the program is an artist career development program that provides emerging artists with an opportunity to build professional skills for um, being able to present a portfolio of work to a gallery, uh, being able to price their work well, being able to sell themselves and their art making practice, their ideas. The festival is also in celebration of Youth Month. We spoke to young and upcoming artists nominated to showcase their artworks, and this is what inspires them. Growing up in the townships, living in uh, Fort Lauderdale, coming to town, and you know, like I was blown away by graffiti, and and and, and in the 90s there was a, a lot of American music influx in South Africa, and you know, I fall in love with hip hop and. And hip hop as a culture, with that culture, there's there's segments in it. Like you know, you, you get graffiti, you get people, but I really like graffiti. Hence, you you see a lot of um, graffiti influence in my work. You know, when I listen listen to jazz, I find a lot of parallels between fine art and jazz. It's it's like two soldiers fighting for the same cause. You know. Just that jazz is more audio and, and fine art is visual, but, but, but the, the struggle is the same, you know. It, 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 it's, it's about bringing a concept that's abstract and relating into, in how people live or, 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 or making it or, or telling, uh, you know, a story, you know, through, through that medium. For me to come up with this kind of work, it's not easy because most, most of my work is about my personal experiences. What I'm portraying in, more, in my works is about the struggle, how people survive on that daily life struggle. We hope the event lived up to its expectations and next year's edition will definitely bring more crowds to come enjoy this spectacular event. Seatless Brew is South Africa's first fully black-owned coffee brand, offering customers a variety of speciality blends designed by coffee barrister Sihle Makubane. The business was started in 2016 by the 35-year-old entrepreneur whose passion for coffee led him to create his own brews. Magubane says he saw an opportunity to meet demand for coffee in Johannesburg and offering customers a new coffee experience in the process. A trained coffee roaster and barrister, Magubane opened his coffee shop Barrister Love two years ago where he personally selects, blends and roasts the beans to make his coffee. Owning a coffee shop since uh, the passion that I have um, mainly it's, it's all about um, it's some of the achievement that I have but uh, it's not yet there where I want it to be. Uh, at the moment we're still busy working to, to grow more in terms of the brand. While Johannesburg has coffee shops in virtually all shopping malls and a wide choice in the most well-to-do suburbs, as well as international chains such as Starbucks, Seatless Brew offers customers something new. This is a cappuccino and it's not too hot, it's beautiful. <laughs> It's so gorgeous. The Americano and the Espresso are my favorite that I always have at this coffee shop. Magubane sources his coffee from some of the continent's best coffee producers, including Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, as well as Brazil.
the quality is, is, is very crucial because from handling of between um, the roasting into finished good, I handle that. I, I make sure that the, col- the quality control is it's always above uh, standard. Sihle, who also uses his coffee shop as a training facility for young baristas, is due to open three stores at various gym facilities in Johannesburg in the coming weeks. Sihle's brew is also available in a number of retail stores across the country. Summer is on the horizon, guys, so don't fret. There's always so much that you can do in summer, but do remember that winter is also a time where you can do so much more. And to help you out with that is our gear guide. Flow through 67 poses chosen in honor of Mandela's legacy at the Mandela Day fundraising yoga session at the historic Constitution Hill in Johannesburg. Many of the poses remind us of the strength and compassion of Madiba, the hero pose, humble warrior pose, mountain pose, fierce pose and many more. This special yoga session will be followed by a special walk with Madiba tour of the museum, all on Saturday the 21st of July. If you are as passionate about the city as we are, make sure you check out the picnics in the sky at Maboneng. Main Street Walks together with Market on Main present the weekly inner city picnic in the sky. This event starts at the Market on Main Market in Maboneng where you will be handed a picnic basket to fill up with goods from the stalls. From there you get to ride on a shuttle bus and taken away to the roof of Africa on the 50th floor of the Carlton Centre. From here it is all about enjoying your food and engaging in conversations with a view of the city skyline every Sunday from 11 till 2. Wrap up warm in your best winter coat and get in the festive spirit this month as the Hyatt in Johannesburg goes all out for a magical snow-filled Christmas in July celebration in the hotel's pretty garden terrace. The Christmas in July party includes wine tastings and craft gins plus a sumptuous offering of delicious festive foods from around the world at the star-lit Christmas market in the hotel gardens. Making this a Christmas in July celebration to remember, they are even bringing a snow machine, a big traditional Christmas tree and of course carol singing to get everyone in the Yuletide spirit. All on Friday, July 20th. During the 1940s and 1950s, multiracial Sophia Town was one of Joburg's most vibrant neighborhoods, famed for its colorful jazz and literary scene. In 1955, the apartheid government sent its bulldozers to destroy the neighborhood. The Soft Town Urban Experience Tour, run by Sophia Town, the Mixed Museum and Heritage Center, offers an in-depth personal introduction to the unique history of Sophia Town. At the end of the tour, you get a chance to dress up and get photos taken at the Soft Town Photo Booth every Monday to Friday from 9 to 4 p.m. Guys, it is Madiba Man, so let us know what you are doing, as I said earlier, on Trends, on SABC, using the hashtag Trends Travel on Twitter or on Instagram. Uh, boss, uh, you holding the plants upside down. Don't go back! Bamba! You fire! Unfair dismissal? Let Clientel Legal tackle your labor issues for you. We have tough professional lawyers standing by to assist you 24 hours a day. SMS DEFEND to 32281 and we'll call you back. SMS NOW. I always say entrepreneurship are those that see opportunities where others don't. You can't give me a bad deal. You can't cheat me. Because I'll read my own contract. I know what's going on in my contract. But I've, I've never been afraid of a challenge. I'm one of those people. I didn't know the difference between my money and the business money. Whatever money that came in used to your money. You'd go shopping, driving all these cars, and, and you were forgetting to pay creditors. If we're more diligent with how we utilize our money. So the great thing with this and my other job being an advocate is that in both industries I sort of own my time. Me today we, we're doing inner city buildings, we're doing commercial projects, 
and we're doing proper development even within the township scale and even now going to an extent of now even establishing offices in the states um, to be able to raise capital to invest in Africa. Keep it locked to Bupilong every Saturday at half past five. Now guys, it is still winter and it's really cold out here, so I have my white hot chocolate, which is not really known for its health benefits, but there is a drink trending in Nigeria that is actually known for its health benefits. Taiwo is making a fresh batch of Zobo, a refreshing herbal drink popular in Nigeria, made from rosal, a species of hibiscus and often flavored with fruits as well as spices. The entrepreneur manufactures the drink under the brand name Exotica Zobo. She incorporates lemons, ginger, cloves and beetroots among other ingredients in her version of Zobo. The mixture is then left to boil for about two hours. Taiwo says demand for healthier drinks among an emerging middle class in the country has pushed entrepreneurs like her to invest in brewing herbal beverages. There's a huge market for it. Everybody wants to be healthy. So that was why I went into it. Considering the fact that I've been, <laughs> I have an aged father that is battling diabetes pretty well, 12 years now, and that's what he takes. So, and I enjoy making it. I enjoy brewing Zobo. Once ready, Exotica Zobo is sieved and left to cool before bottling. Taiwo has been processing and bottling the drink for sale in Lagos for the last two years, where she runs a small factory from her house. Hibiscus is known to balance blood pressure and is also said to be an antioxidant among other benefits. Bearing in mind that we used those products in producing it, in brewing it, like beetroot, lemon, pineapple and the likes, came out really nice and very concentrated. And moreover, it's sweetened with dates, which is which makes it all natural. Consumption for it is from anyone, anyone can take it, kids can take it, adults can take it, even the aged can take it. And having in mind that the health benefits is numerous, the feedback has been very, very encouraging. After a drastic drop in global oil prices, Africa's largest exporter of crude has been working to diversify the economy and develop local sectors and entrepreneurs like Taiwo. The company sells about 2,000 bottles of the drink every month. Exotica Zobo comes in six different flavors, including coconut, strawberry, and banana, amongst others. The beverage is packed in half a liter bottles and should be consumed within four months of production. Zobo Exotica is sold in various stores in Lagos. A pack of 12 bottles sells for about 5.5 US dollars. Absolutely good. I love it. It's heavenly. I love it. Oh, I can't take this every day, but I don't think I should. <laughs> My future plan for Exotica Zobo <laughs> is to replace fizzy drinks at home, in all homes. If it's not taken as cocktail, it should be taken as juice, bottled like we did. You know, so it's a, it's a dynamic product. You can be used as tea, you can take it as juice, and it can be made as cocktail. Taiwo is working on plans to expand her businesses to other parts of the country in future to enable her to reach more clients with her products.
For all its tree-lined avenues and exclusive boutiques, Paris is still short of luxury hotel rooms, meaning the reopening of the iconic Lutetia in the heart of the Swiss left bank is good news for wealthy globetrotters. The hotel was founded in 1910 and between the wars hosted an arty crowd including Ernest Hemingway and Pablo Picasso before becoming a Nazi headquarters during the occupation. Then it was a safe haven for refugees after the liberation. After a $233 million four-year refurbishment, the hotel is set to reopen its doors with an array of 184 rooms, 47 suites, a spa, an indoor pool and a jazz bar with a fresco ceiling. I would say that for the Natesia the main point is the location because uh, we are the unique property uh, Palace Hotels located on the left bank uh, and all of the Grand Hotel are located mainly on the right bank so this is the first point. The other point I think is to, uh, to be located in, in, the, in a place where we consider uh, that it's a very Parisian place Donc, ce que nous avons souhaité dans le cadre de ces rénovations, c'est favoriser le fait que voilà, les, les, les personnes puissent revenir, c'est-à-dire le monde des arts, de la littérature, du cinéma, puissent fréquenter à nouveau le, le Tessia et pour cela offrir euh, des espaces euh, grands, euh, très faciles à utiliser, euh, qui, qui offrent aussi beaucoup de, de confort, avec beaucoup de lumière euh, et une offre euh, qui soit disponible 7 jours sur 7 et du matin au soir. The city already has a cluster of elite hotels, the top rung classed as palaces by the French tourist board and the Ritz and the Crillon have just gone undergone major renovations. But Lutetia general manager Jean-Luc Costi told us that his hotel had an advantage. Yes, in fact, the Paris market is not saturated with uh, luxury or upscale uh, supply in terms of rooms. Uh, we have a few iconic uh, uh, palaces uh, in Paris, but if we compare to London, uh, Moscow, uh, Tokyo, New York, or all the international uh, economic gateway uh, worldwide, uh, we are still uh, a bit uh, behind in terms of supply, so there is still some space. For all its vaunting of its arty past, the 6th district of Paris is now home to top designer boutiques and some of the city's most exclusive neighborhoods. A night in a junior suite at the new Lutetia will set you back about 1500 euros. But CEO of MKG consulting and hotel expert Vanguli Paneotis told us that in comparison to its major international rivals like London and New York, Paris was still lacking in luxury hotel space. Yes, I think um, there is a lack of luxury from this side of uh, Paris because the, the side, uh, the area of, of the Champs Elysees has already some palaces. Uh, there is also uh, a Place Vendôme uh, where some palaces, and on the um, left side of the um, of the river, uh, there, there, there were a lack of, uh, of palaces. So no. Uh, a big uh, hotel is back uh, on this area, which is completely in line with uh, the overall um, environment and neighborhood, uh, which is quite luxury also. Just two or three years ago, opening a luxury hotel would have been wildly optimistic. Tourists had fled France after a series of attacks blamed on Islamist militants. In November 2015, assaults in Paris killed 130 people. Occupancy rates of Paris luxury hotels fell by 15% to 52% in 2016. 
Now the tourists are coming back and the Lutetia hopes to get its share. Remember guys, as I've been saying all day long, you can catch us on Twitter or on Instagram using the hashtag Trends Travel on Trends on SABC. We'd love to hear from you. You fired! Unfair dismissal. Car accident. Caught appearance. Let Tranta Legal tackle your legal problems. Whether it is a car accident, unfair dismissal, uncontested divorce, unfair blacklisting, or a wrongful arrest, we have tough professional lawyers standing by to assist you. With the help of Tranta Legal, I kept my job and I can support my family. I definitely got value for money. It didn't cost me a cent, just my monthly premium. There was one man with his lawyer against a big bank and I won. Car accident. Faulty goods or bad service? You fired! Unfair dismissal. No matter how big or small your legal problems, don't tackle them by yourself. Client and legal. We'll do the tough work for you. SMS right to 32281 and we'll call you back. Is he facing conspiracy? What is the nature of the corruption charges that he faces? But if it's a blatant kind of corruption case, he faces a potential 15 years in prison. <laughs> and lest we forget, his father mm. is in the dock in a few weeks' time, yeah. also facing corruption charges. So those parallels between father and son and the regime change in South Africa and what's happening with our courts at the moment will be something that is profoundly interesting, I think, to all South Africans. It is a place where every stone, every blade of grass, every noise made by insects is part of me. If uh, my views are what they are today, is uh, the cumulative <coughs> result of many factors diverging. My roots are naturally at home, <coughs> but my uh, gaze is beyond the horizon. Well, what would a travel show be if we didn't take it to some of the best destinations throughout the world? So here we are with more fun and games and the best summer weather. Pulling traditional costumes over their modern clothes, these young men and women from Ukraine's capital of Kiev are preparing to take part in one of the oldest rituals, a fertility celebration known as Ivan Kupala. Kiev residents gathered on Friday evening to join celebrations held in an open-air ethnographic museum on the city's outskirts. <laughs> Groups like this also gather in other riverside villages across the country on Midsummer's Eve for a ritual that has endured both political and religious suppression. <laughs> Приїхали сюди, бо в нас Іван син. Це свято також, ну, 
якби його. І давно не, ну, дійсно, давно не, в зв'язку з роботою давно не вибиралися. От, е, просто хотілося відпочити сім'єю. Young girls wearing wildflower wreaths and dressed in traditional long white dresses danced around a bonfire rising high into the evening sky, just like their ancestors did centuries ago. Women are put through purification rituals of fire, water and air. First they make wreaths of herbs collected by moonlight, believed to bring special powers from the fertility deity Ivan Kupala. And then they jump over fire tightly holding the hands of their soulmates. Дизайн не придумала, імпровізація. Тут на щастя, на майбутню дитинку, ну, щоб всім її збувалося, було добро, здоров'ячко. It is believed that jumping over the fire purifies a person from sins and protects from evil. The ceremony is also a chance to find a pair for those who are still single. Ну, віночок, можливо, положимо на грядочку з огірками, можливо, на капусточку, щоб родила. It's great and it's really something unique. You can't find it in many other countries and it shows how much the people they are lovely, friendly and they would like to enjoy the life. В цьому святі вже 10 років. Дуже, дуже добре. Дуже добре, бо ми познайомилися в цей день 10 років назад. І ми до сих пор разом. І ми пригаємо через багаття. І дякуємо Богу, що ми разом. This Slavic tradition is preserved not only in Ukraine, but also in Russia, Belarus and Poland. Fifty-three men slung their wives or partners over their shoulders and set out on an hour-long race in the small Finnish town of Sonkajavi on Saturday, July 7th, as thousands of fans cheered from the stands at the World Wife Caring Championship. The competition, now in its 23rd year, draws thousands of visitors to Songka Javi, population 4,200, and has gained followers across the world. There are official qualifying competitions in countries like the United States, United Kingdom, Sweden and Estonia. On Saturday, Lithuanian parents of two, who first competed in Songa Javi in 2005, won the race which involved running, going through a pool and an obstacle course, defeating six-time world champion Taitisto Mitinen, a Finn. Wife carrying as a modern spot is inspired by the 19th century legend of Rokainen the robber who tested aspiring members of his gang by forcing them to carry sacks of grain or live pigs over a similar course. Inspiration is also said to stem from an even earlier practice of wife stealing which has driven many present day contestants to compete with someone else's wife. Ah! 
this track is uh, 253.5 meter long and there is about uh, 30 meter and there is coming this is swimming pool it's a uh, 1.2 meter deep. I think that this is the hardest part of, uh, of, of this competition. It's very slippery because there is uh, plastic on the bottom. And after that, uh, you run a little bit and there is coming dry upstairs, which are about 80 centimeter high. So you are very tired in the finish line. I think because we only have three months of light, we need to come up with nice stuff to do during the summertime. And we want to show everyone we have a great sense of humor. Finland, which straddles the Arctic Sea and goes through long, dark winters, is no stranger to out there sports. It gave the world boot throwing, air guitar, and mobile phone throwing competitions. A swift command from Abi Mahdi is all it takes to set her horses off on a dance fever. The pair entertained residents in Belkras, where friends, family and neighbors gather for a pre-wedding celebration. بابا جاب واحد يعلم الحصان فقلت اجرب كده قمت جاي ركب الحصان و... وبدات اللي انا اتعلم عليه وقال لي دفعيه وقلبيه جيت ابص بقى لقيت الحصان مجاوب معايا كده قلت بقى ايه علمت بقى الخيل و... وحفظت مواويل والناس بقت تطلبني Music and dance performances are a staple at any Egyptian wedding, where most people hire belly dancers or local musicians to serenade their guests. But before the big day, social gatherings are customary, and Mahdi skillfully joins in, performing a rhythmical stunt with her horses. تدريب الحصان في مثلا حصان بياخد سنة وفي حصان بياخد ثلاث شهور وفي حصان بياخد سنتين حسب دماغ الحصان في حصان كويس وفي حصان مش كويس في حصان غاوي اللعب وغاوي الشاب وفي حصان مش غاوي The high school student along with her team of five trainers teach the horses various dance moves from trotting on each hoof to rearing on command while dancing on his two back hooves. Some moves require the horse to dance from side to side, all the while Mahdi is holding sturdy, firmly keeping her balance on its back. It's difficult to tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to get the horse to get the horse. I'm going to get the horse. يعني ممكن حصانة شاببه ويقوم جاي قالب ممكن حصانة شاببه ويكون مجاوب معايا بكان انا علمت الحصان لصمة ده في ثانية يعني ما خدش معايا وقت لان كان دماغه حلوة ده كان اغلى حاجة عندي الحصان ده
Brussels locals won't need to leave town if they want to bury their feet in the sand and soak up some sun. A festival called Brussels Le Band or Brussels Beach brings just that, the beach, to Belgium's landlocked capital. The makeshift beach opened this week and is now in its 17th edition. This year, the event sits at the entrance to the city's new contemporary art museum, Canal Centre Pompidou. Well, it's just nice um, that, you know, since I live, I live about 12 minutes bike ride from here and um, it's really cool just to be able to come and hang out here as opposed to have to uh, schlep all the way up to the coast to have some, uh, what do you call it, uh, water and beach and, you know, relaxed scenes. So it's kind of nice that they create a beach here in Brussels um, for us locals. Organizers have built large sandboxes at the edge of the Brussels Canal and set up food stands, water fountains, sports events, live music and films. Brussels residents attending the opening day, many of whom from other parts of the world, say they enjoyed not to have to drive to the coast and the friendly atmosphere. They, they never feel that as they are a foreigner here, it's, it's impossible because everybody's in Brussels foreigner, honestly speaking, every two of person and they don't have to speak French and so they don't have to speak Dutch. If they can speak a little bit English, they can do everything, I mean, and even they don't speak anything, they are, everybody does to help them because the people are very friendly and uh, I never have trouble. It's a very, I'm, I'm spending a very good time here, so I hope lots of people, I can share with lots of people with this good time. All that's missing is the sea. People are not allowed to swim in the waterway, but they can go paddle boating. Brussels Beach is open to the public free of cost until next month. Unfortunately, that's all we have for you in today's edition of Trends Travel. But do remember it is Mandela month, so go out and do your bit. You can also come right here and you can have a look at the Mandela 100 exhibition right here at the gallery in Melrose Arch. I almost forgot that it's at the gallery in Melrose Arch. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place. Don't forget to tweet us, to like us and to post pics. Never, never, and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience the oppression of one by another and suffer the indignity. <laughs> and suffer the indignity of being the skunk of the world. The story of Guatu is a microcosm of the problems that continue to plague land reform, where the challenges of redistribution, restitution and security of tenure include not only addressing past injustices and making farms productive, but reclaiming identity. I had, you know, this belief that this is our government. Definitely they will do whatever they can do for us to change our lives. But unfortunately, I think I was just uh, naive. It is the government of South Africa that is owning this land, and it is that government that is denying these people.
This is the man who only has his album out on digital format. Chance the Rapper has landed seven Grammy nominations this year. This success is overseas. A few Pretoria students say they're switching to digital platforms that allow them to pay for their music. I only buy the music that I really, really want, like house. Full album downloads. I'll always go straight to the place and get the whole album. Yeah, I'm, I'm big on the, on the streaming game right now. Recently, Apple Music announced that they're now offering student discounts in South Africa. Musicians feel such offers are a good thing of course um, we're getting connected you know onto online digital stores um, and you're finding a lot of online releases actually long before artists release the physical copies of CDs because they actually want to feed it onto online platforms online platforms are encouraged to consider that Africa is a mobile first continent um, and increasingly also from local platforms that have, you know, customized services to talk to cater to, to specific African markets.